So hello and thank you for having me today. My name is Jarian Gibson. I'm going to talk about FS Logics Apps 2.0. Um, also note that uh, FS Logics won the best of Synergy this year for application and desktop virtualization. So let, let's dig into the FS Logics architecture. Um, so think about all the different um, use cases and groups you're supporting today in your environment, the number of images, um, image sprawl, you know, overhead management, those type of things. With FS Logics, we can consolidate those down into a unified base image. So what we do is we can install all the applications, uh, versions, you know, different versions of Office um, and so forth into the base image, whether it's physical, virtual, um, Zen app, Zen desktop, VMware, Microsoft, in a use case pretty much we can handle as long as it has Windows on it. So we install all those applications into the unified base image. Then we install the FS Logic application and the driver is installed, it's transparent to hypervisor and OS, and through the, the driver we can isolate and hide applications from the user. What we do is once the applications are installed, we assign those applications out using Active Directory users and groups. So when the finance um, users log in, they only see their applications. Now make note that all the applications are in the image, but because of how FS Logics works with its filter driver, the finance people only see the finance application. Log into the same unified base image as an engineering user, and the engineering users only see their engineering application. So again, we're installing all the applications into the base image and through the filter driver and assignment of Active Directory users and groups, only the users who are allocated to those applications through our rules can see the application. So let's talk about 2.0. Um, what I told you before was everything was installed into the base image. With 2.0, we introduced app containerization. And with app containerization, we can take the applications, again, they can be installed into the unified base image, or you can offload the install of those applications to a VHD or VHDX file. Um, the VHD or VD, VD, VHDX file is going to depend on which operating system you're using, you know, Windows 7 versus Windows 8 or higher and so forth. So we take the applications, we put them into the image, or we offload them to a container, um, you install the applications like normal. Um, there's no sequencing or packaging needed, no extra tools. Um, it's uh, a normal install like you would do on, on Windows. We can reduce the size of the base image with our app containers um, by offloading the application installs to those, the VHD or VHDX files. Um, we've seen some use cases with those. Um, a, a, a big one is an HP Moonshot use cases um, early on with the the limits of the hard drive space, um, installing all the applications into the base image um, was not feasible with the size of the hard drive. So we have the app containers where we can offload that to those VHD, VHDX files and not have to worry about the space in the actual uh, main image there. So the way that our application works, we're mounting these um, VHD or VHDX files at the OS level. So we have no limits on the actual number you can mount, um, it's only limited by what the OS can mount. Also in uh, 2.0, we can uh, offload the profiles to VHD or VHDX files as well. Um, if you're using an existing profile solution today, roaming profiles, digital profile management, etc., cetera, um, we have migration tools. So we can take your existing profile and move that into a profile container. Um, it, it's a very good solution over redirected folders um, because the way we work with our containers is it's uh, VHD or VHDX mounted. It's a, a block level mount instead of a file level. So we're reducing the number of, of calls back to your file server and helping with, with the scalability of it. Um, also things like OSTs and PST, uh, PST files, we can put those in our app containers, as our, I'm sorry, our profile containers as well. Um, and so use cases like Office 365 is becoming more and more common and users want to be able to enable that offline uh, cast exchange mode. With our profile containers, we can do that because of the performance um, where when you have redirected folders, um, it might not be the best user experience because you're having all that traffic go across the network, all those calls down through the file system and back to the user. So we can make that a reality today with our profile container. So let's talk about 2.0. Um, similar architecture to what I talked about in the previous slides. Um, we will install the applications into the unified base image. 
we will put in the FS logics piece. We will create our rules, um, assign those rules to Active Directory users in computer or Active Directory users in groups. And again, we can have unlimited containers. So we can have our apps installed in the base image. We can offload those applications to app containers and then put all the user's personalization inside that profile container. So when the sales logs in, they will get all their applications, their personalization, and they'll get the applications that are resided in the unified base image or inside a profile container when, when they come in. We go ahead and log in with the engineering group and the same concept. They'll get all their applications for them, their personalization from their profile container, and again, they can have a different version of Office um, than the sales group had, or they have like uh, the full Adobe um, version versus just the reader version and so forth. With our filter driver and the way FS Logics works, we can have different versions of the application installed, isolate those from the users, um, and because they can't even go down and browse to see the actual program files either. They'll only see what they're entitled to inside the registry, inside of um, the file system, um, also with uh, file type associations and being able to right click uh, on the desktop and you know, send to or open with type things as well. FS Logics will handle all of that. So let's talk about some of the top 10 use cases for FS Logics apps. Um, a big one is image sprawl. Uh, a lot of times, and you know, me being a consultant, um, I, I do work for FS Logics, I, I do consulting as well. And what happens is um, a lot of customers have the image sprawl issue, whether it's link clones, whether it's MCS, TVS, even physical desktop. Um, what FS Logics can do, because we can install all the applications into that unified base image and then only show what the user needs based on their Active Directory permissions, we can greatly reduce the overhead of all the image sprawl in your environment. Um, think about application silos. So, you know, how many times do you have to build certain application styles in your environment because you have a certain version of an application, or um, you want to isolate applications from different users. With FS Logic, we can handle that to where we can help eliminate those silos for those uh, for those requirements in your environment. Um, we can make non-persistent VDI a reality um, because, again, because we can reduce the number of images that you have, um, uh, reduce the management, uh, be able to have all those applications in that unified base image, and be able to uh, again assign those out through Active Directory permissions. Um, profile issues, a, a big one. I mentioned the Office 365 use case um, becoming more and more, and we could have the OST files in our profile containers and get pretty much like local experience, and I'll show you that here in a, in a few slides of the comparison of using the profile containers versus traditional full redirection um, and so forth. Um, reduce, you know, DR and, and business continuity virtual desktop license compliance. So again, we're assigning all of our rules for the applications to Active Directory users and groups. So when you have that kind of compliance auditing, you can say, look, these users only have access to these applications, and you can prove that um, using the FS Logics tool. There's the reporting function as well, um, but also you're assigning everything out to Active Directory users and groups, so everything's tied to that. Um, VDI and DAV without legacy management overhead. Uh, Java, which is a big use case, you know, again, back to that silo, have different versions of Java. Um, without having to have different silos um, in the application or in your environment for, you know, virtual desktops or even um, RDSH um, use cases. Version control and rollback for application updates. And then again, um, granularity for different browser plugins, printers, fonts, office add-ins, all that because with, with our tool, um, the way we can isolate that out and assign that to users and groups, you know, we, we can do that in that unified base image. So Java version control, and this is a big use case. I know for me in the past, um, when you have different versions of Java, you're doing multiple silos with multiple images, but with Java redirection, what we can do is support both applications and applets. So um, if you have certain applications or applets in your certain Java version, we can handle that with the FS Logic Java redirection. Um, we can redirect them you know, based on simple rules. So we, we pick the applet and we say, we'll assign a certain version of Java to it, or we'll say, this tab, I'm sorry, this URL needs to go to this style of version. So when you open up your tab in your browser, each different tab based on the URL can have a different version of Java. Yeah, Ram? We also can improve security as well. So what, what you do, yes? Five minutes. Okay. So um, we can also improve security as well. So what we do is for any of your legacy applications, um, we have the certain version number, uh, the certain version of Java assigned to those, and then what we do is anything that doesn't have a specific version, 
and that can always use the latest version of Java. And so what you do, just like our unified base image, is you install all the applications into that unified base image. Again, no packaging or sequencing needed. Um, so you have all your versions of Java, and then what you do is you create your rules based on the URL, based on the application, and then again, if it doesn't have a Java rule assigned to it, the catch-all will be use the latest version of Java. So um, uh, profile containers, uh, we talked about you know, reducing, eliminating folder redirection, um, reducing the user experience issues with having things like OSTs and large files and folder redirections. So you see here in this graphic, um, we can put, again, our profiles into a VHD or VHDX file. Um, we can reduce the login time, um, reduce the, uh, the stress on your file server. Um, you know, again, we can migrate your existing profile into FSLogix profile container. And then it's also an alternative way to folder redirection because what we're doing is we're putting everything into that profile container. If you look at the numbers here, again, because we're operating at a block level with that profile container, we're greatly reducing the, the stress, the number of calls um, on your file server um, versus what you have with normal redirected folders where they're you know, constantly making calls back and could be taxing your file server. Um, with the way the FS logic scales, there's no database or ongoing management required. Um, it's a very scalable infrastructure because you have the application inside your base images. You can figure from there, tie to Active Directory Group, and the main thing you'll need is a file share to, to store the profile containers. And, and again, that Office 365 use case, um, large files like OSTs, anything else possibly, um, you know, there's always that, that case of application data. Do I redirect it, leave it in the profile? With this one, we eliminate that argument. You leave it in the profile, put it in our profile container, and basically you're having a near-like local um, experience with our profile containers. Um, here's some numbers here. So you're seeing here from, from testing that we have done is basically with our profile containers, look how much reduction in traffic and also um, the size of traffic going across from your file server to um, where the access logic profile can, uh, is loaded from the profile container. So again, we can work, work in these different scenarios, um, you know, help with you with your legacy file servers, um, cache exchange mode and, and VDI and RDSH, and then again, uh, eliminate those logon storms, reduce the traffic, the distress on, on your file servers um, in, in your environment. So I'll leave that there for a second. Again, the blue, FSLogix profile containers. The red you'll see is running profiles with redirection and running profiles by, by themselves. Um, again, you see that we can greatly reduce the um, amount of stress on your file server, improve user experience, improve logon time Jaren? with the profile containers. Two minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, so again, with FS Logix, um, you know, recap on these different problems that we can solve. Um, kind of the same things we went over earlier in the environment. Um, you know, image sprawl, eliminate silos, help with profile issues, um, those type of things. Um, so, uh, thank you for having FS Logic on today. Um, I'm going to go back to that slide so you can see that while I'm finishing up here. Um, if you need to test it out, want to get further information, please go to fslogic.com. You can download a, a trial, um, install it pretty easy, and the, the team will be happy to help you out get going in your environment. Um, any questions, you can reach out to me as well or, or go to FS Logic website, download it, um, and they will contact you and help you with your trial. Um, I've got a minute left. Any questions? Yeah, let's see. I, I passed the questions over to uh, to FS Logics, but let's see here. Uh, hmm. How does FS Logics con containerization compares to VMware Cloud Volumes? So with VMware Cloud Volumes, it's a little bit different. So with FS Logics, we're using VHD and VHDX files. We're mounting at the OS level. Um, so it's a little bit different uh, the way that it works with uh, with cloud volumes and the way you have to package the application. We just install the applications into the image and we create our redirection rules um, to go ahead and isolate and hide those applications. Um, we can also do things like, like the Java piece I showed you, the way our filter driver works in the operating system, where we can re um, do the Java redirection and isolate Java. Great. We also get some questions here about pricing, but for Any other that, questions? please for pricing but please go to the uh to the uh virtual booth and request a private demo and uh you will get in contact with fs logic so they can provide you the the prices yeah i'm a technical guy so i'll tell you pricing pricing is all relative so it's going to depend on 
you know, a number of certain things. So I definitely, for you know, look at them or look to them to give you pricing. Go to the website, talk to them. Um, they can help you with that, understand the size of your environment and so forth, and work with you on pricing. Thanks a lot, Jerry. All right, thank you.